Hello everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video, we're going to get out of the studio and into the outdoors. Our destination for this video is on the eastern coast of the United States of America at Ocean Isle Beach in the state of North Carolina. Located on the southern tip of North Carolina, Ocean Isle Beach is a beautiful location. And because of the orientation of the island, you get beautiful sunrises and beautiful sunsets. The island is separated from the mainland by a huge marshland, an interconnecting maze of waterways and reeds. No matter what time of year it is, this area is always breathtaking. So I set out to a hidden location I had found a few days prior, overlooking this beautiful marshland. It wasn't easy to get to. As you can see, I had to do some climbing. Once I found a good spot, I decided to set up my easel and my chair, along with my pastels, of course, and get started. For this image, I'm working on a darker gray pastel matte paper, and I'm using a combination of Rembrandt pastels and new pastels. Rembrandt pastels, of course, are traditional soft pastels, and new pastels are just a little bit harder, um, and they're better suited for details, but I'll be switching back and forth throughout the process. For this image, I wanted to focus on the line of houses off in the distance and bring out a lot of the color that I saw there. I also wanted to bring attention to this area by concentrating on the diagonal that happens with the water in the scene as well. So most of the information is going to be featured on the the lower three-fourths of the picture plane with the upper fourth basically reserved for the sky. As you can see here, I've started with a cooler gray pastel just blocking out the overall shape of the houses, the marshland, and also the waterway. And then it was time to switch over to a light blue and go ahead and block in the color for the sky. Now, of course, some of the color is reflected in the water, and in this particular image, I wanted to create uh, an image that had really bright colors that popped. So, I was deviating quite a bit from the natural colors that I noticed, but it was important to have some of those light blues in the water as well. Now, of course, you'll notice there's a transition from lighter blue at the bottom of the sky, close to the horizon line, to darker blue up towards the top. So. I used a light blue pastel here to create this transition and then blended it with my finger to create a smoother transition. Now I'm starting to add some of the color for some of the distant houses here. And this is a very light peachy color here. Again, just quickly blocking in areas of color. I'm not trying to get too obsessed with the details, just thinking about fields of color and overall shapes. Now a bit of a lighter lime green, and then back to a pinky peach, we'll call it. Of course, these houses have these wonderful pastel colors painted on them, and uh, I wanted to accentuate that in this image. They look a little bit dull in reality, but of course in our drawing, we can make our colors pop a little bit more and make them a little bit more exciting. You can see I'm using this dark gray to establish a lot of the shadowed areas. This is the same dark gray that I used to block out the original shapes of the houses. 
Now, of course, you can also see that we're using this color to refine the shapes of the houses as well. And now we're switching over to a warmer umber color, basically to apply this to the sides of the roofs that are facing the light source. This will bring a little bit of warmth to the image. Now, I want you to notice that I'm not spending a lot of time fussing over the details. Instead, I'm just, again, just focusing on fields of color, and I'm making my choices on which color to use fairly quickly. Um, I'm not laboring over which color I'm going to choose next or trying to match the colors exactly. You'll also notice that I'm making quick loose marks here as we switch over to a uh, darker brown here. I'm just focusing on lights and darks. Again, just shade shapes of color. What's what's interesting is even though we don't include details in an image like this or we imply details, our mind or the minds of our viewer actually puts this information together and the image makes sense. So here you can see I've skipped over to the side of the picture plane where we're seeing some of uh, the reeds uh, and things in the marshland, adding a bit of pink and a bit of a brighter yellow green here. Those colors really vibrate nicely off of each other. And then it's back to the water again, adding some highlights with a lighter blue. And you'll see throughout the process, we're gonna add all sorts of colors in the waters, brown greens and so on because a lot of those colors actually are visible there in reality uh, but we're going to you know exaggerate them a little bit as well So as you can see, I'm quickly switching between colors. Whenever I look at the subject and I see a color, I'll go ahead and pick a color that's uh, similar to that color and not uh, overthink things too much. You can see here a bit of blue is used for some of the shadowed areas and we'll continue to develop these shadowed areas a little bit further. Um, I'm going ahead and putting some indication of some of the windows and some of the cast shadows, but there also is a, a building that has a blue roof off in the distance, so that blue is used there as well. Now, a little bit of cream here and there. Uh, you notice I haven't used white yet. I'm, I'm avoiding white and black at this point, although we will use a bit of black in the process just to make the values a little bit darker. But uh, this cream color is good for adding some of the so-called white areas. It's real easy to look at a subject and see areas that are probably considered to be white, but white like black can make an image look flat, so you want to use it sparingly. So that's why I'm using some of those lighter creams and lighter grays for some of those so-called white areas. Then I'll continue to switch back and forth between that darker gray that we started with originally, creating some of the shadowed areas. Then of course it's back with a darker brown, again adding a little bit of some darker tones here and there underneath some of the small little docks and piers and also uh, some of the areas in the marshland as well. Here you can see how I'm set up in the marshland and about this time the bugs have started to eat my legs. Um, and even though it's a little bit uncomfortable with the bug bites, it's really nice outside um, as I created this image. Now, as you can see, I've made a little bit of progress here. I've skipped forward a little bit. Um, here I'm using a lighter blue again just to refine some of the edges of the houses. You'll also notice that I've added a bit of black here and there for some of the shadowed areas. Added some of the palm trees and also added a little bit more complexity to the water with some greens and some browns. We can continue to refine the drawing slash painting as we go through the process here. As you can see, I'm continuing to work some in the sky and then also bringing down some of the colors in the waterway here as well. Now you'll notice most of the strokes are horizontal in the water and that's just because this is dictated by what I'm observing here. Most of the little ripples are also horizontal from my vantage point. And you'll notice all of the colors that I've added in the water. There are greens, there are yellow greens, there are even some reddish browns in there, here and there. And um, I, that's because I'm just seeing these colors and, and kind of quickly adding them to the painting. And as a result, we're getting some really colorful water, but it's harmonious with the rest of the scene because I'm making sure that I'm adding these colors in other locations as well. Now a little bit of umber is added here. This is kind of a muted umber and also some darker browns as well. So as we continue to add these colors, there's a little bit more complexity to the water, a little bit more interest, and also a little bit more pop, we'll say. There's more contrast here, especially with these dark 
darker browns that are added. Um, but one of the things that's tricky with working outdoors is that your light is always changing. And in this particular case, the tide is actually going out and coming back in. And uh, so the water levels are actually changing as well. So that allows you to create uh, somewhat of a more dynamic piece. And it also forces you to be a little bit more creative. You also have to make sure that your light source makes sense in your drawing or painting as well because the light is changing the shadows also change and that can create some inconsistencies in your image now in this particular case i was only out here for about an hour and a half total so the light didn't change that dramatically but it did change even in the short time now you can see I'm going back and just making some refinements to some of the edges of things here. This time with a, uh, a lighter yellow. This is actually kind of more of a creamier color. Adding some highlights and also uh, some indications of some, some details. And again, I'm putting details in quotations because this, this image is very, very loose. It's very painterly. Um, you know, it's meant to have kind of that looser look here. And this, of course, is one of the wonderful things about pastels is that you can lay down colors very, very quickly. You can uh, create quite a bit of depth in, a, in a, an image relatively quickly, too, because they layer over the top of previous applications so easily. Of course, if you're going to be layering lots of applications like we are here, you do want to work on a surface that's going to be able to accept all of those, uh, those layers of applications, which means that you're going to need to work with a paper with a heavier tooth. Now, the pastel matte paper Paper does have a deceptively heavy tooth here. It is somewhat almost like a fine grit sandpaper, but that of course allows us to make lots of layered applications on the surface. But even this paper has a limit too. Um, a lot of times people, when they first use pastels, they'll work on regular drawing paper and uh, there's just not enough tooth on regular drawing paper to really get a lot of layered applications. And that's why it's so important to use a, uh, a, a paper that has a heavier tooth and it maybe is, is suited for pastel applications. So you can see I've added a little bit of black over the top of the uh, section of reeds that's closest to the viewer and now I'm developing some of the lighter values over the top, some browns, obviously some yellow greens, some yellows, and also uh, a few areas of some reddish browns. And as you can probably tell, I'm not focused on the individual grass blades here. I'm not picking out an individual grass blade and say, I'm going to add that grass blade here. Instead, I'm just focusing mainly on the rhythm of the strokes here or the rhythm of the grass blades and trying to mimic that with the marks that I'm making. You can see how loose these are. And as you can probably tell in the upper right hand corner, we've got a little bit of nature drama going on up there. There is a bird that's actually chasing a fish there. You can kind of see that and another bird um, closely behind there. So I'll stop for a minute to watch this action play out. <laughs> and of course, this is just one of those wonderful things that happens when you're drawing or painting outside. All right, uh, now I'm adding some coolness to some of the shadows here just to, to add a little bit more pop of color here with a darker blue. Again, this color is added mainly to the shadowed areas, but also to portions of the water. And you might notice that the tide has started to come back in here at this point. So uh, when we began the drawing, the tide was actually going out and now it's on its way back in. A few more browns here are added just to uh, further define or refine the edge of the marshland. Uh, so we've got a little bit of contrast between the edge of the marshland and of course the water. A few more reeds are pulled up with this darker brown. And then we'll also use it to create a little bit more of a stronger shadow on some of these palm trees. And then of course it's back to our light blue. We'll add a few more strong highlights here in the water. And 
you can see here, even though I have deviated quite a bit from the local colors, the observed colors, we still have an image that has quite a bit of harmony and unity associated with it. And that's because we've spread these colors out throughout the piece. So we're not using just one color in one area. We're using a color and then using it in multiple areas within the picture plane. Of course, that's going to help create that harmony and unity. And then we can go back to the buildings if we like and uh, strengthen up some of the shadows and some of the highlights, make some of the colors a little bit stronger here. Now, of course, you can refine a drawing like this to your heart's content, but at some point you have to determine it is finished. And in this case, uh, it was a good time for me to determine that this was finished. And here's a look at our finished result. It's definitely looser, but it has some bright colors and definitely some rhythm and interest. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this little art adventure and I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, why not subscribe? We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media and subject matter here and click on that notification bell so you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. Now, if you want to check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, you can do so. There's a link in the description below. Clicking on it will take you to a page where you can enter your email address and you get instant access to three of our course videos and ebooks absolutely for free. And of course, these are all part of our wonderful membership program that we have over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subjects and media, weekly live lessons, which are all recorded and stored in our vault, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers as well. You can find more information about that or check out our program. There's a link in the description below. Now, a few weeks ago, I published a video on drawing some water with graphite and I asked you guys to comment why you liked working with graphite. And I told you that one of those commenters would receive a year long subscription to our program absolutely for free. And the winner is Kimmy Bush. So thanks so much for all of you guys who commented and uh, look forward for those opportunities coming in the future. Now, as always, uh, I wanna thank you again for watching this video and I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.